Hiya folks and welcome to the breathtakingly beautiful island of Jersey. That's the amphibious bus heading out to the castle behind me. We've been here for just about a year, so I thought I'd show you around. Come take a drive with me. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beautiful island of Jersey. In the Channel Islands, between the UK and France. If you are new to this channel, uh, perhaps you just search the word Jersey. This is a bit of a departure for me, so bear with me as I explain it to my viewers. Hello viewers, how are you? On this channel I speak about how to go from amateur to expert and I speak about concepts related to wealth and uh, success principles in entrepreneurship and in business. However, about a year ago, my family and I relocated from Johannesburg to this beautiful island. And uh, a few people, including my friends and family, have asked if I could do a little drive around video and just kind of show what it looks like. And I'd love to because this place is gorgeous. Now I see I'm going to have some challenges with my uh, camera here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to meander aimlessly for a couple of reasons. The first reason is I like the idea of a long video with no particular route in mind. I'm, I'm quite addicted to a thing called the watched walker, a guy who walks around London. Uh, and I can watch those silly things for hours, just this sort of silent video of the sights and sounds and so on of early morning or Christmas time, whatever the case might be. And I love watching videos about other nations and just seeing things the way they are. That's the first reason. And the second reason we won't be following a particular path is um, because I get lost very easily. <laughs> For my South African friends, the term is Yiltemal Richting Bedonert. So I'm not particularly planning on going anywhere. We're just going to meander around and I'll chat with you about my impressions of the island, what it's been like living here. My family and I came from Johannesburg, we've been here for about a year. When we moved here, my son was four years old. He's now five and he started school at the age of four, which is quite something for us in South Africa. He started at the age of six. He's already doing basic little math sums. If you break 10 in half, you get two fives and so on and learning to spell and enjoying himself immensely. In this video, we will talk about pretty Portuguese mommies and their mismatched children. <laughs> I'll explain what I mean by that one. Scary sidewalks and gates of death. And I'll show you some of those. Fast Wi-Fi and even faster incoming tides and why this just might be one of the most beautiful places in the world. So, where are we? We are on the island of Jersey, which is about roughly 9 by 16 miles. Right at the moment, I'm driving past the castle, the Elizabeth Castle. It's on my right-hand side. And we're coming up to what you might call the CBD. There is no huge-scale city in Jersey, the way that uh, you would understand it if you come from a London or even a South Africa, anywhere else in the world. But uh, St. Helier is technically the city, it's the CBD, and it is the financial hub. Now this is quite a wealthy island, so you have a lot of the Deloitte's and the KPMG's and businesses of that nature. In fact, uh, Deloitte is coming up on the left-hand side. For me though, fortunately, I can do what I do anywhere in the world. I have several income streams, including my YouTube channel, um, the books that I write, and I tell you, there's no downside to writing a book close to a castle, looking out over a castle with a tide coming in. I do voiceovers and I speak at conferences, and of course, being close to the UK and European markets is good for that too. Right, so we're going past what you would in inverted commas call the city part of St. Helia of Jersey, and we're going to go through a tunnel, come out the other side, go along the coast, and we'll head roughly in the direction of the second castle. The first castle that we've just gone past now is called Elizabeth Castle. It's the one you saw me uh, standing in front of in the introduction. And that one is uh, a few hundred years old. Gory Castle 
is closer to a thousand years old, and it's the bigger of the two. That's the one where my son buys his knights in armor stuff. Terribly important. They are phenomenal here with things like museums and tourism. At the castle, for example, they have outfits that you, your kids can put on. You can put on as well if you want to do a little cosplay if you and your wife are into that sort of thing. So every time my son goes there, he puts on his little knight in armor outfit and we go walking around an actual castle and you can imagine he's delighted by that. Our island here is actually significantly closer to France than it is to the UK. Here we go through a tunnel under one of the, uh, the hills. It's the only real underground tunnel on the island, unless you count the war bunkers, which are fascinating in and of themselves. We're closer to France than we are to the UK, quite substantially so. In fact, you can see France from the top of Gorey Castle. You can't see the UK from here. It's about a half hour flight. And when you see it on a map, <laughs> you have to conclude that it's quite cheeky of the Brits to own this place. Uh, but there's about a thousand year history to that as well. It goes back to one of the, um, the French kings who became an English king and then essentially gifted the place, uh, gave it its own independence. So there's a, a backstory to that one, but it is much closer to France than it is to the UK. On a map, it looks like this is a little island off the coast of France. It is part of a small sort of chain of small islands. Um, it is the biggest... the biggest of the Channel Islands. The second biggest is Guernsey. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of mostly friendly competition between the two. Jersey is seen to be a little bit more of a business-centric island. I haven't been to, to Guernsey, my wife has, and she says her impression of it is that it is much more, um, in, in many ways, prettier, which is quite something. I mean, you'll see how beautiful this little island is, but it's certainly not as highly developed as this one. In terms of population, we have about 103,000 people on the island, so a fairly small population, but it's densely packed. Apparently, if we, if the UK were three times as populous as what it is now, it would then be just about as densely packed as the island of Jersey, and that has some interesting effects. For example, the tight little pavements everywhere and the tight little streets everywhere. They are beautiful, but terrifying. It's the first thing I noticed after my family and I came here from Johannesburg and we had to do our lockdown. A little COVID period, with a little bit of theater. And uh, once we came out, we took the four-year-old walking down the pavements and at first I found it terrifying to be so close to traffic. Um, and often on the pavements, like if, if one person is walking on one side of the road, the person coming toward you will cross over and walk on the other side because there's not enough pavement. And at first I felt really rude walking up a pavement and essentially forcing someone to cross the road. But it's just normal here. There is a wonderful shuffle on through kind of vibe to the place and it just works. And it works because everyone is so politely British. My wife was laughing about a... Uh, a meme she saw, typically British problems, the other day that said something to the effect that, uh, you know, typical British problem is standing in a produce aisle, staring at a tomato, while you wait for the person who's staring at the cucumbers to move out of the way. And the person staring at the cucumbers is politely doing so while they wait for you to move away from the tomatoes. It's very true, this place is astonishingly polite. Um, just the loveliest group of people that you will ever meet, with the possible exception of the folks who come out of the pubs at 2 a.m. and fight and mate outside of our bedroom window at the top of their voices, but we'll get to that topic as well. Yeah. So you see the person in front of me just let the other guy in there. That is very typical of Jersey driving and <laughs> perhaps less typical in South Africa where we have extreme road rage problems. And I kid you not, that is a very real thing there. People are very relaxed and kind in the traffic here in comparison. There's just so little aggression. You don't see it the way you do in South Africa. Part of that is that the highest speed limit on the island is 40 miles an hour.
and most of the speed limits on most of the roads are about 20 miles an hour. And what happens is, when you drive, everyone just sort of lets everyone else in and they kind of shuffle on by. When we first arrived here, we have a South African friend and uh, Ruani, and she drove us around the first time. And I took one look at this and I actually said to myself, I'm never going to drive on this island because it's so small, it's so tight, it's so complex, and so difficult to get around these funny technical little roads. And I'll show you some of these country roads as we go. But then I tried it, and you discover that it's the easiest thing in the world because of this combination of general polite goodwill on the one hand, and the sort of shuffle on by philosophy on the other. Everyone just kind of makes room for the person who needs to get through and if someone is struggling they kind of welcome them in and if you sit waiting for your turn long enough someone will slow down and wave you in and flick their lights and it all just kind of works. You just have to wade out into it and, uh, and give it a try. They do have buses on the island, which is what I swore I would use when I first got here. I'm a, I'm a car lover, but I found this very, very strange style of driving when I got here. And we at first said, well, we'll just use public transport all the time. I mean, why, why bother to have a car? It's a needless expense on an island like this. You have to have a car. This is not London. London, you can get around without a car. Here, there are limits, very strict limits, to what you can actually accomplish. Now, look at that. This person's just stopped there and let us go the other way. And this is this shuffle on by that I mentioned. There's the ocean up ahead of us here. And we are just kind of going along the ocean to uh, toward the direction of Gory Castle, which is the second, uh, the older and the bigger one on the island. And what I will then do is I will veer off into the sort of the interior and the little country lanes and so forth, because it is achingly pretty up there. I don't know that you'll get a sense of it on this video, but the coastline beside us is ghostly and rugged. The beaches here are one type of Jersey beauty. There are many Jerseys, there are many forms of beauty on this surprisingly densely packed and amazing little island. There is the rugged, ghostly style of beach beauty, which we have next to us here, where you get incoming sea fogs and so forth going over the rocks and, uh, and the outcrops, and it's just the most beautiful, haunted kind of sight. Then you get the more classic beaches, where, just concentrating on my driving there, um, where you'll get sort of half-naked suntanned people and families and so forth, and the beaches are, are lovely. The ones that are not uh, stone and not rugged are actually incredibly nice. You can go surfing the whole trip. And this is called the Sunshine Island, so it gets a lot more sunshine, in fact, than any other part of the UK. Uh, technically, they don't call themselves UK, it's part of Great Britain, but we'll get to that as well. <laughs> So there are different types of beauty. There's the rugged coastline, there's the beach-like coastline, the more sort of uh, Californian style beach. There is the English cottage style interior, which is like little farms and little country lanes and the sort of hobbit-like places on the island. Now see here, someone's parked on the side and we all just kind of, again, shuffle on through. And everyone's okay with that. Nobody shouts at anyone else. Nobody dies. So you see next to me there was a Union Jack and the flag of Jersey. And the Union Jack is flown over the flag of Jersey here. We, we are under the Union Jack. We are in fact what is called a crown dependency. So that means we are under the Queen. But we are not under the government of Westminster, which is UK. Jersey has its own government. That government basically reports into, or is uh, subservient to, the Queen of Great Britain, of, uh, of England. So it's a bit of a confusing one. We are British, but we are not UK. Now having said that, the cops who came and uh, did a little display at my, uh, my son's school and rang their, uh, their bells and their sirens very loudly, which is quite light, handed out some forms which say police.jersey.uk. So, you know, it's a happy hodgepodge and it all kind of works. It works extraordinarily well. I love and miss South Africa and we haven't really decided what the sort of long-term plan is. We've been here for about a year now. 
South Africa struggles with crime. Jersey doesn't. It has very, very low crime rates. The kind of crime that they have here is very different in kind and in nature. The sad thing about the crime in, Jan in uh, Johannesburg and in South Africa is that it tends to be violent in nature. You have things like uh, violent carjackings and housebreakings and so on. And it is, uh, it's not uncommon for people to, to be harmed, to be murdered during things like that. And it's happened to family members of ours, it's happened to friends of ours, and everyone has a story. Which is such a great shame because it is such a beautiful place with so much potential. choked up when I think about it. Nevertheless, on the island of Jersey, I mean, like all places, you know, they have their issues, but the issues are so small. They're so small <laughs> as to occasionally be quite funny. Like, we came from South Africa, and, uh, I mean, like, the headline a day or two before this was like, you know, 14 killed in taxi accident, and 20 shot at this, and, you know, it's really, really horrific stuff. So much so that it can become a bit numbing lose sight of how beautiful a country it is and, uh, and the crime and the violence just becomes like background noise after a while and you just learn to live like that. When we started thinking about coming here we, we began to read the Jersey Evening Post. That's the one to read if you want to find out what's happening in Jersey, the Jersey Evening Post, J-E-P. And the headline, the one day, I laughed so hard about this I actually showed it to all my family and friends in South Africa. Headline was about how the government ministers here had decided that they were going to reject a proposal to cover bicycle racks with little roofs on the grounds that they had decided it looks ugly. And that was the front page news. Bicycle ministers say no, because it doesn't look very nice. The funniest part of the whole thing to me was they had to haul out a government minister who then came and posed in a suit, standing in a public square, for the front page, for an article in which the whole point was, we're not going to do bicycle racks because they look too ugly. And I thought that was just the most fantastic thing. Right, so you see here some very, very typical Jersey road and lane and so forth. Isn't this beautiful? It's got a very English feel. When I read about and watched YouTube videos about coming to Jersey before we got here, the sense that we got was that it was half French and half British. I don't think that's accurate. The sense that I have now is that this is very British. In fact, I have yet to meet a French-speaking person who lives here. I've met a couple of uh, support staff, waiters and so forth who have been French and they bring with them the usual French attributes. But I have not met a local Jersey resident who is French. The sense that I get is that it is much more British. Second largest population, and I think this is by quite a large margin, is Portuguese. I love the Portuguese people here. They're the most fantastically warm, friendly, hard-working people. I also find it hilarious when my son goes to school with me because my son started off with a South African accent and uh, I don't have a particularly pronounced South African accent but if you know the accent it can be quite guttural it's like yours and this sort of thing and uh, it's, it's got a bit of, of that kind of sound to it. My son comes here and he's lost it completely he now sounds like a little Brit but the contrast between me and him is not as great as the contrast between the pretty Portuguese mommies and their kids. That is the funniest thing. I know a, a sort of a smattering of Spanish and so I can kind of pick up little bits and pieces that they say in Portuguese. I mean, I, I can kind of pick up key words here and there. But it's like the pretty Portuguese mommies will say goodbye to their kids and it's like, okay, Luca, you'll have a nice day at school. And little Luca will go, okay, mommy, thank you so much. See you later. And I just find that absolutely incredible. I mean, the, the kids pick up the accent so quickly. One of the weird things that uh, we were told, and I've, I've heard this repeatedly but from many people, is, oh, but the Jersey accent is so very similar to the South African accent. Forgive me, I can't hear it. At all. Uh, there are parts of South Africa where the accent can be mistaken for an English accent. 
and of course there are many expat Brits in South Africa but I don't hear the overlap personally so we're driving along the coast here and we're uh, again heading in the direction of Gorey Castle and this is very rugged coastline if you, uh, if you get a chance to sort of glance that way I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up you'll see an awful lot of rock and outcrops and so forth you can't really go swimming on those beaches the beaches that are more accessible are dog paradise to their great credit the people in Jersey are dog fanatics and you have never seen a happier dog than the one who lives on the island of Jersey gets to do regular walks on the beach in fact the uh, let's just stop for the tractor and let him in they actually have right of way, which is terrifying if you're on a little country lane. There you go. Yeah, I think he's going to turn around. Uh, the first beach that my, my son ever went to is in a place called Havre de Par, which is a, a French name. And um, the first dog that he met there was Hamish. Hence, that is forever after known as the Hamish Beach. See the little ivy-covered walls? A lot of building here. Uh, mostly in St. Helier, you see this crane moving about here. That's a little unusual out this way. But in St. Helier, it is everywhere. And I must say, to their great credit as well, when you walk down the high streets and around the shops and, and uh, the business district, you often see scaffolding where they are painting, fixing, renovating, renewing. And um, they're always doing that, which is to their great credit. The OCD part of me wishes that just once, all of the scaffolding could be down at the same time. Just to sort of look at the place and go, it is done, it is finished. Um, and see it the way that it sort of should be in totality. But yeah, to their great credit, they're exceptionally good with the upkeep on, uh, on public infrastructure and on stores and so on. Right, there's the castle. Can you see it there? That's the bigger of the two. And it looks out on frogs. Now, first time on this beach around here, the four-year-old and I made a point of mooning frogs, because you must, it's important. Look at the blossoms coming out everywhere. It is late April at the moment, and uh, spring on the island. A little bit of a hazy day. We've actually had some clear blue days over the last couple of weeks, which gave me the idea to film this. I wish I'd caught a clear blue day. But uh, nevertheless, it is glorious spring on the island of Jersey. That lady just stopped in the road to take off her jersey. Things can get a bit casual. It's lovely. I hope political correctness never causes people to stop calling each other love. You walk into a store here and they go, hello love, thanks love. And if something goes wrong, you forget a card or something, they go, don't worry love, you can pay tomorrow. How's that for my South African friends? And they say, well, what are you going to do? You live on the island. I mean, where are you going to go? It's also one of the reasons why there's so little crime here. I mean, you can't <laughs> steal a car. How are you going to steal a car? Where are you going to go? So people are exceptionally trusting here. It is a very high trust society and looked at from the perspective of the wealth of nations high trust societies prosper pretty much by definition low trust societies tend toward third world conditions there's some very interesting links on that one if that sort of topic matter interests you read dr thomas soul s-o-w-e-l-l -L. this is a very high trust society that's a wonderful one school 20 miles an hour please and that lady watering the bricks of her wall perhaps they'll grow the island is well known for being under German occupation if you've ever watched the movie with the long and complex title that I'll try to remember off the top of my head the Guernsey literary and potato peel pie society something of that nature if you haven't watched it, you must. It is brilliant. That talks about the occupation of the island by the Germans, and of course that's in the case of Guernsey. Jersey was also occupied. 
roof and we have a lot of German fortifications here as a result. You can actually go and visit the war tunnels. The conditions under Nazi occupation were horrendous. Britain, um, the rest of Europe and then Britain won, won the war and uh, you know France and so on were liberated. It took something like another nine months before they got around to liberating the Channel Islands. And in that time, there was serious starvation. This island had a very hard time of it. The museums and the war tunnels and so, and so on are outstanding. And I must say, one of the things that this island does, perhaps better than any other place I've seen, and, and I'll say this, this is a British thing. Their museums are incredible. They really excel at gathering, sharing, and displaying knowledge in ways that make ideas come alive. I mean, if you've been to things like the London Museum and so on, it's, it's a place where you can walk in and see the Rosetta Stone. The significance of that gives me chills from head to toe. They are so good at that sort of thing. And there's a little parking area off to our right where you can go down to the beach in front of the castle. But we're going to drive around the castle and then up a hill. Or around to where the castle is, the promontory. And we'll go up a hill there and uh, from that point we'll head more into sort of rural country lanes and so forth. But yeah, the museums here are unbelievably good to the point that my four-year-old, who's now five, asks to go to the Maritime Museum over and over and over. The Maritime Museum is tiny, but there is so much packed into the place that you can do multiple visits and discover new stuff every time. And it's all quaint little cabinets and little things tucked away and clever displays and you walk into one of the bigger rooms and the whole thing is a ship and you look down on a globe of the earth. It is brilliantly well done. How pretty is that castle? Now look at the property over here, looking out over the bay, with the castle on the one side, and France in the distance, and you can see France in the distance on a clear day. You want to take a guess how much that kind of property costs? <laughs> the property market here is the most expensive in Great Britain, and that includes London. That's a terrifying thought. So the, apparently the average at the moment for property prices in London is somewhere around the £650,000 mark for a house. That's, that's like an average. And that's high by UK standards. We are somewhere around eight to 900,000. Isn't that beautiful? I'm, I'm sorry, but isn't that just one of the most beautiful sights you have ever seen? I wish we had uh, more time to sort of stop and scan around. Perhaps what I can do is actually just insert a couple of useful visuals there. But here we go around the corner of death. Step out of that uh, little cafe, that coffee shop too quickly and you'll meet people coming the other way in an awful hurry. But again, it works, and here I must stop. I'm going to kind of pull to the side a little while these guys try to get by me. And uh, no fight, no strain, no stress, perfectly normal. It's just how it's done. Up we go. Sending up the hill. And this looks very Devon and Cornwall sort of uh, pink and blue houses and English coastal village style. English coastal villages are just some of the prettiest things that have ever happened. This place is so beautiful. Even in winter, when everything becomes a little bit more bleak, it takes on something of a ghostly beauty. I rather like that as well. But in spring, when everything comes to life, it's a, it's a special little corner of the world. Okay, so here we go, widening up the hill. And speed limits around places like this are all either 20 or 30 miles an hour. As I say, the fastest you can go on the island is 40 miles an hour. If you speak in kilometers an hour, that's uh, somewhere in the region of sort of 70, 80 kilometers an hour. That's it. Go faster than that and a speed womble will catch you. And he will tell you many angry things all of which begin with the word oi. I'm 
Right, so look how immediately we end up in a, uh, a rural setting. Everything is packed, obviously, very tightly together on the island of Jersey. So you go from kind of continental style cafes and beaches and sidewalks to this sort of English stone farm and rural countryside very quickly. There's a garden center up ahead here and it's a particularly good one. Uh, for my South African friends, think lifestyle, very much like that in, uh, in Randburg. <laughs> Shout out to my Randburg hobies. But now look at this. Here we have these potato fields. Jersey Royals are of course globally famous as are Jersey cows and I'm sure we'll find ourselves some. And you get these little sort of this patchwork of potato fields and little farms, things of that nature, and it is just so pretty. They've even, very much like the UK mainland, set aside little walking paths where you can go kind of head through a ravine or head through a walking path and do a couple of miles on foot. It's one of the few things we haven't actually done here yet and must do. So that's a gate of death. Look at that. Straight out of that gate onto the road. Gate of death with a French name. And there are many gates of death. They're all over the show. It's like your house is right next to the road. And look at this wall next to me. This is the kind of thing that I saw when I first came from South Africa. And our friend was driving us around and I thought, I am never going to drive on these roads. And it gets thinner and hairier than this. And because the tractors of death have right of way, <laughs> what can actually happen is you find yourself halfway up one of these tiny little country lanes. And then all of a sudden you have to reverse possibly the entire country lane until the tractor can get past you gentleman on his uh, machine there, or you can sort of scamper off into a field and let him go by. When I first saw that, I turned to my wife and I said, if I'm ever driving and that happens, I am going to have a sudden case of voluntary narcolepsy, and may God be with you in terms of how you resolve it. I'm just going to check out, and whatever happens, happens. I, I won't be around for it. Gate of death, gate of death, another gate of death. Here we come up to a Jersey traffic jam. Oh no, wait, they're parked on the side of the road. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, you do get traffic jams here, obviously on a much smaller scale. In Johannesburg, we used to take my son to nursery school 2.2 kilometers away. And sometimes in the morning, that would take us 35 minutes just to do that little bit of, uh, of distance. You get traffic jams here, they can be annoying. They're much smaller. The weird thing here is the one-way streets. The one-way streets are baffling at first. If you come here and you drive, for heaven's sake, get yourself a navigation system, you'll be fine. Once you have a navigation system, and once you understand that people will just politely let you in and everyone shuffles on by, you will be absolutely fine. I'm just gonna stop and let this guy go through. And they're having a little chat. Range Rover man and Pentagon truck man. And there the lady lets him in, and I'll go, and you know, so it goes. Uh, if you have a navigation system, driving here is easy. If you don't, you're in for a world of hurt. Okay, priority over, oh, I've got priority over, I'm not going to be here, thank you so much. And the reason for that, these one-way streets do something very odd. Um, <laughs> we rent parking. Now, this is a, another new thing for me as a South African. Like, you just have a big yard and a big driveway, and of course your car is there. This place is so pressed for space that you rent parking wherever it is. The first parking spot we rented was a kilometer from where we lived. We then got one that was only 600 meters from where we lived. Yay. St. Martin's School. But when you do that two or three times a day, walk into your car, that six, that uh, 400 meter difference <laughs> it adds up. Um, so this whole thing of walking to your car, we found something baffling about the one ways. You'd get to your car, and at first we thought, man, it's such a long distance from, say, the car to maybe our kid's school. Ultimately, we figured out that what was actually happening is that because of the one ways, 
you would add a kilometer or two to the total distance just to turn around. Here comes a tractor of death. So at first, when you don't sort of recognize the sights around you, you, you just kind of take it for granted. The GPS tells you where to go, and you go, okay, turn left here, turn left here, turn left here. Ultimately, though, when we became a bit more familiar with the place, we realized that the first kilometer or two were basically just turning the car around and facing it the other way. And then you'd do like the kilometer and a half to our kid's school. So two kilometers of that can be just turning the car around. It's a lot easier on foot, but sometimes it rains on you. The rain is different too. Um, I miss thunderstorms in Johannesburg. That was uh, one of my favorite things about living in Africa, thunderstorms, afternoon thunderstorms. And they're dramatic and the rain comes down and you get that first fat raindrop, you hear it thud. There are some Jersey cows. Hello, Jersey cows. Very pretty. Okay, let me try and get around the wall of death on my left-hand side. I can barely see here that uh, Someone will let me in eventually. Or there'll be a cracking great accident and that'll be the end of this YouTube video. Actually, at the speeds you drive here, it'll just be a thump. Two people going down. What the heck was I talking about? Ah, rainstorms, yeah. So the nature of rain is different in Johannesburg. You get these fat droplets and then the next thing you are being doused by the heavens, or pummeled to death by hail. Here they don't understand that. We talk about hail being dangerous, and they go, why would it be dangerous? They get sort of tiny little pieces of hail, if, if at all. What tends to happen here is you'll be walking your kid to school or walking the high street doing some shopping, and it's like a heavy mist that just sort of fades into existence. And the next thing you know, you're walking in a light rain. I found it very rare to have a heavy rain here. It fades in almost imperceptibly, and then it sort of fades back out again. And for that reason, people are very used to walking in the rain. It's not a weird thing to do here. In South Africa, if it rains, like, get inside or you're gonna die. <laughs> Everything's a little bit more high stakes and dramatic in Africa. But here, it's just this kind of passing mist. It's a, it's a very different thing. Things I miss from South Africa, the whole place, the people, the sunshine, the particular gold nature of the sunshine, the thunderstorms. I miss Hardy Dars. <laughs> In place of Hardy Dars, we have these incredibly aggressive seagulls. Those seagulls walk past you making eye contact. They're weighing you up. They're like, can I take him? When my son gets an ice cream at the park, the lady actually hands it over and says, please be careful of seagulls, they will attack you. And they do. I miss the sound that Hardy Dars make. I miss Wimpy's, bacon and egg breakfasts. You can get bacon and egg breakfasts here. It's not quite the same thing. There is seated service. It's very expensive. It's very good. It's not the same thing as a Wimpy. Wimpy, for those who are not South African, is a chain store of like breakfast and burger eateries, but um, not quite the same thing as an American diner. So uh, done, it, done at a slightly higher level than that, and a very sort of slick operation in the sense that, uh, you know, it's service at your table, it's uh, everything is very standardized and so forth. It's a menu uh, and the whole trip. Thanks. And bacon and egg breakfasts are the heart and soul of it. When they serve bacon and eggs here, they infallibly do so with beans. I don't know why. I've decided I don't mind it. Beans are not my favorite thing in the world, but they come with all breakfasts that are bacon and egg based here. That's very much a standard part of it. Shout out to my wimpy peeps. So here's a person who's stopped in the road and is reversing into a gate of death because that's the kind of maneuver you can do here. There you go. How pretty are these little roads? Um, I vaguely miss malls. There is no mall on the island of Jersey. Now, you can get anything that you want. You can order anything you want off Amazon, and it's incredibly efficient, gets here very quickly, and because this is a tax haven, a lovely little thing happens. You see the price on Amazon, it says something like, say, 50 pounds. 
you buy it, you end up spending, I don't know, what is it, like 45 pounds, 43 pounds or something. The explanation for that one is they've taken off the tax because it's Jersey. Well done, Jersey. All taxation is theft, we'll talk about that. They do have all the things that you would want from a mall. So, you can, for example, go to a cinema, but the cinema is a separate structure. Thank you so much. You can go to the Aqua Splash Zone, which is a um, sort of a wave pool um, and a super tube indoor water park, and it's stunning. One. My, my son absolutely loves it, and so do I. You can go to pretty much any kind of store that you need on the High Street. The High Street is very much the English style cobbled lane with boutique stores all along it. Very, very beautiful. Very old-fashioned style. Very expensive. It's uh, Most of the stores tend to be high-end boutique. And you can get the things you want. There are bookstores, there are coffee stores galore and so forth. But there is no more. There is no casino. There are no strip joints, so stop asking. But you know, I can't say I miss it too badly, because look at this. It's just incredible. Kind of in the heart of the island now, heading up north-ish. On the eastern side, which is uh, the side closer to France. Things I don't miss from South Africa. The danger, the crime, the aggressive driving. Uh, and of course, you know, those are things that South Africans themselves would rather not have. Most of us. It's an unfortunately violent minority of people that make life horrible for the rest of us. Okay, which way should we go? Let's go left. Oh yes, I think we'll do that. Uh, turn to the left. Now here you see the lanes are getting smaller. Slightly more terrifying. Gotta keep an eye out for things coming the other way. Like that. Things that they excel at on this island. Historical theater. On important days, they will have like knights dressed up in the public square doing a little show for kids or jesters. If you go to the castles, they'll have men in uh, soldiers' uniforms, red coats, telling stories and firing muskets. They are exceptionally good at preserving and promoting history. They make it come alive like no one else. This gentleman has very kindly waited for me. Thank you so much. Okay. They're very good at charity. They're exceptionally good here. I think this is very much a British thing. With charitable causes, helping people out, caring about people, animals, and so forth. They're generally kind a lot. I came across a stat in a Bill Bryson book where he said, if you live in the UK, and this is uh, quite recent actually, I mean, this is a recent stat, he says you are statistically more likely to die by walking into a wall than to be killed by your fellow Brit. He says the British are just not good at visiting violence upon one another. I think he's even factoring in the Scots. The Scots are some of my favorite people on this island. Let's talk about some of the demographics. I will head down again to the left. We'll see what's down here. So the second biggest group on this island I've found, uh, I suppose you, you must also add in there Brits, as in from the, from the UK, people who are not Jersey born. That's a massive group, but uh, <laughs> they'd kill me for saying this, but to me, indistinguishable. <gasps> and after that, it's the Portuguese people. Then there's a large Polish population and um, a growing South African population. I think we're still sort of relatively new here and so we don't have much in the way of stats for us. But you meet South Africans everywhere. The, we, we spent our first 10 days in isolation after the whole COVID theater thing. 
And uh, the first thing I did when I got out was I joined a gym down at the waterfront overlooking the uh, Elizabeth Castle. It's still the one that I go to, Jersey Fitness First. I love it there. And the first person that I met coming down the stairs going, hi, welcome to the gym, was Francois from South Africa. One of my favorite people on the island, just such a good guy. And uh, Francois, a very friendly, sort of affable guy down at the gym, spends his entire day talking to the ladies with the painted on pants. Not his fault, he's a very good looking guy. But there are South Africans everywhere and they are very good at networking, welcoming each other and so forth. Our, uh, our friend Ruani, who we hadn't met until we got here, we just we, we knew her from Facebook forums, helped us out to an extent that we can probably never repay. Just such a kind-hearted, good person. It's also helped me with a couple of tips on the lighting of my YouTube videos. Thank you, Ruani. I used to have a green screen back home in this entire sort of elaborate setup for filming YouTube videos. And I came here and all my stuff is still in a crate and has to be sent over. So the first few videos that I did here looked a little amateur and I kind of went, well, I've just got to give myself permission to, to do a cheaper version and get going anyway. And she helped me out with some simple things with LED lights and three-point lighting and ambient lighting and things like that. I think it's made a big difference. If you get a chance, go and check out one of the other videos. Tell me what you think. Say, for example, the video immediately prior to this one. You go back a few and they actually look quite bad. Other things that they excel at. Community spirit. This is a very community-oriented, family-oriented island. To their great credit. It's quite funny, the Happiness Index was published just a little while ago, and one of the things that knocked them, I think, is a false metric. They said that people on the island of Jersey are highly involved in their community, but not highly involved in politics. And low involvement in politics is taken to be a metric indicating low levels of happiness. I think that is false. I think it, it uh, indicates the exact opposite. Take, for example, the 2020 US presidential elections. That had the highest level of participation of any presidential election in the United States up to that point. Do you think the Americans are happy? Are they happy with their politics? Are they happy with their presidents? I put it to you that high involvement in politics shows discontent and unhappiness. And I think when a group of people are not participating in their politics to a large extent, it's because, by and large, they think things are okay. They're not that particularly up in arms about anything to do with their scenario. Okay, I know where I am again now. <laughs> we are now coming down the hill towards St. Helia, so I've kind of looped up from the castle up to the top of the island, or sort of the heart of the island, and now I'm heading back down again. St. Helia is at the south, at the bottom of the island, ever so slightly more toward the east. And uh, we are heading down a hill toward First, the sort of the suburbs around St. Helia, houses and uh, schools and a couple of stores and things of that nature, and then into the CBD itself. So I think what I'll do is I'll take you through some of the CBD there, just so you get a little bit of a taste for what it's like to actually be in St. Helia. Can't go into the high streets and so forth because they are portioned off for pedestrians only. Take a look, cranes everywhere. Coming down uh, down the road there, first thing you see on the horizon, cranes, church spires and cranes. There's a lot of building going on. They have massive issues here with finding enough housing for people. And a weird problem with service. You can't find enough waiters, waitresses, builders, service staff on the island. It has to do with their housing. It is incredibly expensive. And they keep on building incredibly expensive apartments for, like, couples who have no children. Uh, and not building cheaper accommodation for large families and uh, groups of people who perhaps want to share. Okay, so we're at a circle here. And we shall wait for our turn. Good. Okay, off we go. Camera. This is where it keeps tending to fall off as I go around corners. 
<laughs> You'll have to be sideways for a second. Put you back where you should be. <sighs> okay. And off we go. Let's wait until there's a gap in traffic and I can get back out again. Let's see we are. The BBC radio station is kind of uh, up ahead here. To my great delight and surprise, for a little while I was in the running to be an afternoon presenter on BBC Jersey. I'm Douglas Kruger, this is BBC Jersey. And someone else got it. Still trying to arrange a bus accident for them, we'll see. Yeah, so bicycles take right-of-way pretty much over everyone at all times, which can be quite frustrating. Sometimes you'll have like a mom or a dad on a bike and a little kid on a bike beside them going up a hill and everybody slows down and lets them go, which is wonderfully polite. Park next to us, quite a large park, but also very frustrating. My uh, inner introvert cringes on their behalf. I'm like, ah, I feel so much pressure on their behalf. And yet nobody cares. We just let them through. Everyone's chilled. Everyone behaves themselves. It's a stunning park on our uh, left-hand side. They're very good with their public spaces, with their parks. In addition to being quite large for the island, in fact, surprisingly large sometimes, what they also do is they build in kids' play areas. And sometimes they're delightfully unconventional. They'll have strange types of swings and slides and things that you wouldn't really expect. And I think that's delightful. Sadly, they sometimes attract sweary teenagers, and the teenagers can be very sweary. If I have one criticism about Jersey, it's the language used by the itinerant youths. Some of it I had to look up. It's quite odd, actually, because the parents are just some of the loveliest, nicest, most polite people you'll meet. <laughs> some of the youth are feral. Right, so, here we are, coming past the Deloitte buildings in the opposite direction. They're now on our right-hand side. Which means that Elizabeth Castle is back on our left. What I'm going to do now is go along this coastline and uh, we'll go up the other side of the island. There's an amazing amount of stuff on this island for families and kids and so on to do. Um, for such a small space, it's quite amazing that a year later we are still discovering forms of entertainment and they're good ones. And they have the Aqua Splash Zone, which is the indoor wave pools and super tubes and so forth. Uh, there's also another hotel that has a second indoor area with uh, pools and slides and so forth, which we haven't actually gotten to yet. There is the Jersey Zoo, which my son goes to on a regular basis. We have a membership for heritage sites in Jersey, which gets you into the zoo for free. Best money we've ever spent like the Maritime Museum, which, you know, gets us in there too. My kid just wants to go over and over and over. In addition to how good the zoo itself is, they have two separate play areas there, an indoor soft play area and an outdoor one, sort of climbing jungle gyms and things of that nature. Um, and appropriately, the orangutans kind of overlooking it. And they sell the best potato the world has ever seen. Simple little meal where they take a baked potato, Jersey Royal potato, and they put uh, chicken and mayonnaise in it. Oh man, I go there just for that potato. And the orangutans, they're cool too. I like the otters. Otters are probably my favorite. They have a Neolithic site here, which if I remember correctly, is something like two or three thousand years older than the pyramids. And you see the way it's built in these stones and the sort of the entrance and so on. And you think of those time periods in the history of man. Two, three thousand years before the pyramids. It gives me the shivers.
shoulders in a wonderful way and makes me feel small in ways that I enjoy. They have street parades on a regular basis. Depths of winter when you're in the despair of it all. They have this Christmas parade and they put on a spectacular show. There's a little train, a uh, little sort of toy train that goes up and down this stretch of coastline. I'm hoping we'll see it. Mostly used by like parents and older people. <laughs> Occasionally they let kids ride too. There is the amphibious bus going out to the castle here that we saw at the beginning of the video. They have air shows over the bay. Watch the uh, jets and airplanes out over the stretch of water. You see sailing ships going past, you see the ferry going to France. We haven't done that one yet, very much like to. They have multiple gyms, mine is quite a good one. If you're coming to the island and you're looking for a good gym, Try Jersey Fitness first, which is easy to get to because it's uh, St. Helier. It's down by the harbour by um, Elizabeth Castle. It's one of the, the bigger ones in terms of floor space. And also I might see you there. Populated by South Africans, can't go wrong. They also opened up a very well stocked one up near the McDonald's. So if you are anywhere closer to the McDonald's in St. Helia, I can't recall the name of that particular gym, but it's, I mean, it's like two doors down from the McDonald's. Looks very well stocked. Wouldn't mind trying out some of their equipment. And there are churches and social clubs and gatherings of all kinds around here. So there's plenty, plenty to do. Um, if you go to the other side of the island, the direction that we're heading in now, you'll see guys like paragliding over one of the bays. I just think that's absolutely fantastic. I, I can't think of a better way to spend an afternoon than hanging in the air above a gorgeous little stretch of Jersey coastline. Not a bad way to live. Some crazy people have also started doing cold water swims here. <laughs> Midwinter, early mornings, late nights, into the sea. I wish them well. They look like human beings. You see them from the outside. They don't understand them. That little bit of coastline over there with the houses on it. Again, that sort of Devon and Cornwall kind of feel. And I guess in many ways this is similar to climate because Devon and Cornwall are, you know, south of, uh, of England. And we're slightly further south still, but we very much look the same. We bear a, a great sort of resemblance. And yet this is also uniquely Jersey. Like I say, I don't much get the French thing. There are some buildings that you would go, yeah, all right, that has a French influence. You do get some sort of French cafes and restaurants and so on. But this is very much more culturally British. And it prides itself on being Jersey. As I say, you've got to be a little bit careful of uh, telling these people that they are like from the UK or anything like that, or English. They are not. They are Jersey beans. I'm very proud of it. I think rightly so. Okay, we go. Tiny little circle. I love the little English pubs all over the show. There's something so charming about that. Old English pub. And there he goes calling them English. No, it's a Jersey pub. All right, I'll meet you halfway. It's a British pub. Names like the Cock and Bottle. friends ask my wife which you'd prefer first. Ukrainian flag flying all over the show. Some of the oddities, the seasons here are totally, totally different to one another. In South Africa it kind of fades from chilly to warm back to chilly and even in winter on the Highfeld Johannesburg area you get these very dry, fairly temperate winters with a lot of sunshine. If you're in Cape Town, which is close to South Africa, speaks a similar language. You have wet, cold winters and many other issues besides. But here the seasons are much more dramatic and much more pronounced. There was like one day, we, we arrived here kind of height of summer, 
uh, or, or rather end of spring, but going into very hot weather. And there was one day after a few months where it just changed and it was suddenly autumn. And autumn here is autumn. It's not slightly chillier, it's not slightly different. It is a totally different season. It's much more pronounced. Winter is winter with a capital W. It goes awfully British. It rains in winter, it's overcast in winter, there's no green in winter, the trees all die. The, um, the pretty girls all put on clothing, it's just a dreadful time of the year. But it's pretty in its own ghostly sort of way. And there's something so wonderful about the warm lighting coming from inside of homes and inside of pubs and so on, in the depths of these dramatic British style winters. Now we are by no means Scotland, I mean it was very survivable. Like we put the heater on inside the uh, inside our flat, which is very well insulated, probably like three or four times in the entire winter. Most of the time the place is so well insulated, if you're inside, you're fine. You don't even really need like jerseys or heaters or so on on um, during winter. Oh, that's pretty. A little fishing village-y kind of place. Okay, and here we go up the hill again. Once again, you'll see how dramatically it changes because we're about to go into a forested area from this little coastal bit. So the seasons are much more pronounced. It's very different. Parking is a bugger here. Very difficult to find parking, very expensive when you do. Oh, I got a little sad face because I'm doing 21 instead of 20. I don't like a sad face. I like it when it gives me a happy face. That's ruined my day. I feel judged and found wanting. A little walking path off to the left over there, and that goes down through the forest. Cyclists and walkers and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Right, up we go, up the hill. Other odd things here. Somehow, the style for teenage guys of perming your hair has survived another year. I don't get it. But that's okay. Everyone is free to do as they wish. Get around a tight little corner here. Windy, windy. And up here we go. They call underpants pants. One day at work, my <laughs> wife was talking to a bunch of colleagues, and uh, she said to one of the guys there, "But you've worn you've worn pants more than one day in a row." And that seemed like a fairly innocuous thing for her to say. And like meerkats, the heads of all her colleagues popped up because what they heard, I mean, wearing pants multiple times is like wearing underpants multiple times. A long discussion ensued in which they tried to extricate themselves from that verbal mess. My wife worked out that, oh, there's a difference. One of the weirder things we do in South Africa is we sometimes call traffic lights robots. We're the only nation in the world that does that. Nobody knows what we're talking about. Turn left at the robot. What? Did you bump your head? We are at a slightly higher elevation here. Oh, if you come to the island of Jersey, may I suggest that the first place you go to buy things is the charity shops. Don't start by going to the high streets, which are extraordinarily expensive. If you go to the charity shops, like at the Durrell Zoo, or there are a few sort of... Um, scattered around St. Helier and all around the island, you will find Gucci, you will find Armani, you will find all the top brands for like a pound or two. The most expensive pair of jeans I have ever owned is also the cheapest pair of jeans I have ever owned. I got this pair of jeans sort of designer label that I looked up and they would ordinarily be something like I think it was like 150 pounds. In South African uh, money, that's like 3,000 rand. Well, it's like 3 million rand. And um, it, it costs something like four pounds at a charity shop. And they're like brand new. Often these things even have the labels on. 
I think what happens is people try them on, don't like them, and just go, eh, give it to a charity shop. Start there. If you want to buy toys for your kids, start at the charity shop. We got the entire Mr. Men series of books, all of them, a whole pile, a little mountain of Mr. Men books, for two pounds. If you buy one in a bookstore, you will pay, I think, about four or five pounds for one. That might bear double checking, but the difference is profound. We're heading roughly toward the um, sort of the area of the airport here. And once again, I'm just going to take a sort of a general meander all around the show. Double decker buses. The bus service here is nice, it's very good, it's well run. Most of the people who drive the buses and so on are extremely friendly and very helpful. We met one exception once. But it is not sufficiently extensive that you can go anywhere you need on the island using a bus. Um, and certainly it's generally not possible for you to go from your home or your apartment, say, to your kids' school and then to work by bus. The, the routes tend not to be that comprehensive. Easy enough to get from, say, the main bus station to the airport or, you know, something as sort of big and predictable as that. Um, but beyond that, no, not really. It's not, it's not London. I'm told that using taxis here is eye-wateringly expensive. You can rent EVs, electric vehicles. You get like a, what's that, a little BMW i3, you know, something of that nature. And you can rent them by the hour. You can also rent a truck, generally an electric truck, by the hour. So if you need to move and you don't know a man with a van, you can do that yourself. And it's easy and it's fun. Things that are cheap, things that are expensive. Second-hand cars, pre-owned cars, are relatively cheap. Sometimes delightfully so. Houses, booze, red meat, terrifyingly expensive. Learn to swallow raw eggs. I shall teach you many things. Let's see, is this thing gonna check my speed? I need a smiley face. Oh, it doesn't seem to be switched on. I'm not gonna get my smiley face. If you um, buy a membership to Jersey Heritage, you get access to all kinds of things for free. The zoo, the museums, and so forth. And they are all eminently worth it. They excel at things like that. Blossoms out all over the show, spring on the island. In terms of our next steps, we haven't made any sort of final decisions on uh, our place and direction in life and so forth, but we're very much enjoying living here for now, being here just about a year. shall stay a little longer and see how it goes. If, um, if, if you know me from previous videos and so forth, you know I've written some uh, 12 business and non-fiction books. Earlier this year, Penguin released my first novel, The Man Who Never Was. And um, we're now busy with the process for the second one, which will be a thriller, kind of a Dean Coonsie style called Character Scan. So my world at the moment, working on my little YouTube videos, working on uh, the next novels, I've actually written a couple after that. I'm hoping that we can increase the pace of publication. Last I chatted with Penguin, we were talking about like a year, year and a half between novels, and I think that's too slow. I think we need to get to like six months at a time. That's all 
shuffle on by here. Uh, terrifying the first time you have to do this behind a bus, or beside a bus. It becomes very ordinary after that. I reckon about the best car for this island is either the Mini, or in fact that little BMW i3, the electric one. You see a lot of both. You see a heck of a lot of Minis. The great virtue of that BMW is not its looks, by any stretch of the imagination. Can I go past here? Let's try. Yes. But that it is thin. And the quality you most need here in a car is skinniness. Get you a skinny car. Horses by the side of the road, sheep on the other side. in the distance there. See the tower, and if I... Oh no, that's not... Is that airport tower? I think it might be. I think that's to do with the airport, but we're not actually at the airport at the moment. And if I am uh, not completely lost my bearing here, I believe we're coming up to the famous lighthouse. There are some wonderful photography shows and art shows and so forth in which they feature parts of Jersey, coastline, so forth. And um, you'll typically see appearances by this incredibly beautiful lighthouse. Perhaps that'd be a good place to end our video. The tide here, like the Wi-Fi, is among the fastest in the world. We have apparently the fastest Wi-Fi rates in the world. And we have the second fastest incoming tide. Which could be terrifying the first time you walk out to something and get stranded. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? coastline on this side. Like I say, some places you get the more sort of typical California surfer style beach, and some places you get wild and rugged. This one's wild and rugged. There are even some drop-offs that are mountainous, which is quite surprising for the size of the island. so different around this side that uh, keep going a little longer strain your patience and tolerance I think the ultimate life is to write dark and twisty thrillers and to have a mountaintop mansion overlooking one of these wild bays watch the ships go by at night and write stories about you, but that lights me up. Ooh, quite a drop off on my left. You see, a lot of the houses have these conservatories, little sort of outdoor glassed off area, and it's such a clever idea, because although this is the Sunshine Island, it is still very British in its type of weather. You get a lot of rain, you get cold days, you get windy days. Generally, the wind is the worst of the lot. Even on uh, winter's days and so on, even on rainy days, if it's not windy, then it's generally not that bad. But the wind makes it icy, icy cold. Those conservatories not only give you an extra room, but they give you access to a little bit of light and outdoor space. And that matters in a built-up place. It's just a very clever use of space. Homes here, typically not very big, but generally quite luxurious. It is a relatively wealthy island, but it is a very small and tightly packed island. So when you see these big English country farmhouses, you are often looking at like 15, 20 million pounds. For uh, South Africans are going, is that 400 million rand? Yes. Gate of death, gate of death. A lot of the 
postmen will uh, ride around on bikes and so on, or just walking uh, in some cases. Police are very friendly. Comes a mini, I'd say one of hundreds on the island. That's a convertible one. I think a Cooper S. I reckon that's how you do it. On this island, <laughs> in South Africa, you can't get away with a drop-top car. Firstly, because guys at the gym would question your manhood, bro. Like, is it? Do you, you think you're oak, but you drive a car with, like, uh, like no roof. Uh, and secondly, because you kind of get mugged at every intersection. This being a sort of a small island and a very safe place, you can very much get away with a convertible car. So our only complaint has really has been um, in the apartment that we're in now we're actually about a year in here and we are due to move to a, a sort of a slightly more luxurious apartment in two weeks from now the one that we're in is really it's very nice but a it doesn't have underground parking which has been a big issue for us um, and b it has this <laughs> weird proximity to a club we have a nightclub and a pub pretty much diagonally across from us and we didn't realize that until 2.30 a.m. on the first Thursday night, was it a Wednesday night, that we tried to, uh, to sleep here. And at 2.30, itinerant youths meet, mate, fight, and bring out some very choice language at top volume in the street. Now, for a South African coming from a quiet suburb where, you know, any noise at night is like cause for alarm, you know, get out of bed and go see what that is. Um, that, that was a bit of a culture shock. But it's not prevalent all over the show. We just happen to hit it unlucky with that particular place. Um, and the shouting and so on at night is, uh, is incredible and sometimes contains some very colorful vocabulary. Words we don't really want to our four and five, our five-year-old now to know. But we're moving to a new place and it's uh, it's done out in, in something of like what you might call a Roman-style atrium, with a big sort of garden in the center, four walls around it, and the, uh, the apartments are built into that, facing inward toward the garden. So incredibly quiet, underground parking and so forth. We're very much looking forward to that, not having to walk to our parking spot every time. It's just such a strange thing to have to do. There we go, Jersey Post is delivering something. Quiet and busy deciding things. But we like it, we're very happy here. Everything is, is smaller in scale, you don't have large yards, you don't have massive open spaces. But it's made up for by the beaches and open seas and beautiful parks and all of the accommodations they make for kids to play, families to move about and so forth. And there's also just something very wonderful about not living in what I sort of call cubicle syndrome, which in South Africa is like you lock yourself into your car, you lock yourself into your home, you go to a mall, everything is like a capsule of some kind. Uh, it's much easier here to live out in the city, you can walk everywhere, you're safe wherever you go, uh, you know, women can walk home safely alone at night, by and large and within reason. And that makes a huge difference to your sense of well-being. There's no road rage here, very little anger here. There's a big sense of frustration around the housing problem and the rising costs of housing and so forth, and they've got a very, very big issue with that. But it's a peaceful place to live. It's a half hour's flight to London. You can pretty much swim to France. We keep discovering.
discovering new things, even though we've been here for a year, and even though it's such a small piece of land. Quote Meatloaf, there's always something magic, there's always something new. Locals here kind of say that you need to get off the rock at least once a year. I can see how that makes sense. You want to go to a London or something and, uh, and just feel the sense of a bigger place, more bustle, more life, more whatever. But this is a, a lovely place to come back to and it's so close to everything. In many ways, all the best of what's British without all the worst of what's British. is UK based so all the normal television channels that you get in the UK and all the uh, the advertising that you would get there you get here it's exactly the same and very easy to get things like Netflix, Britbox, um, Sky, Now things of that nature here we go through a little bit of a winding foresty area This will take us back down to the beach, to the waterfront, and to the harbour that goes to Elizabeth Castle. Thing to know, if you're planning on moving here, do not come here unless your occupation entitles you to a license. If your occupation or your business entitles you to a license, you can rent, you can buy housing, things of that nature at a high level. If you are not licensed, you cannot. You then have to rent what they call unlicensed housing, and that puts you into a very, very difficult situation. We were very blessed to uh, discover that we were in a good situation with that one. And a lot of people have been very surprised to get here with an offer of employment and discover that they can only get unlicensed housing. And that, that's not ideal. So we came up this hill a few minutes ago. Now we're heading back down it toward the waterfront. And uh, this is the little harbor that I said looks so much like a Devon or a Cornwall little restaurants and uh, a bit of fishing and so forth around here, lots of, lots of boating. And I've taken up about an hour and a half of your life, so once we get to a pretty view, I think we will call it a day. And thank you for travelling with me. Hope you enjoyed this basic little tour around the island of Jersey in the Channel Islands. As this bus comes out of our way, we should have a really lovely view of the harbour in front of us there. Isn't that just great? Oh goody, there's the train! The train of which I spoke. I have spoken of this train. Just the sweetest thing. The little Jersey flags waving on top. Here he goes up and down the coastline. Full of tourists and happy Jersey beans. Kids are all at school, so these are like all grown ups. So what? I would too. And you would too, admit it.
today is Friday and it's uh, now afternoon on a clear warm day so what will start happening now is that we will have a lot of um, scantily clad individuals of all shapes and sizes and boy they come in all shapes and sizes heading out to the beach and the harbour and the waterfronts and so forth and having a fantastic weekend. First, just to give us a little bit of space from the train. And there he goes, he's heading off onto the pavement. Isn't that cool? Which means that we have the road to ourselves. All of these houses along this harbour front all just have the most incredible views. The greater your elevation, the, uh, the better the view. They look out across the harbour to Elizabeth Castle on the other side, and the ferries and the boats and so forth. And the camera hasn't fallen down in a while. Maybe it's building up to something big. sail over there. Oh, that's a nice one. Black Cooper S with a cream leather interior. 17,900 pounds. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The Goose Pub up ahead. Again, these sort of little British pubs all over the show. filter in turn as opposed to a give to the give way to the right to turn. If you do happen to drive here or if you're a pedestrian here, they explain what you do at every every intersection. So if you don't know what to do, there's a little sign going filter in turn or look left or give way to oncoming traffic. The island is small enough that they can actually put a little sign for every little instance of anomaly. Uh, you even <laughs> approach things like pedestrian crossing. It'll tell you which way to look. It'll be like, look left over here. And that's of course because of all the one-way streets. Or it might say, look right. I bet you didn't guess that one. Range Rover is quite popular here, which is sort of surprising given how small the roads are. I suppose if you can get a bus around the island, you can get a Range Rover around it. Can be done. Yeah, I think cars like the Minis and the uh, BMW i8s and the little Fiats and so on are probably about best suited for this island. My car back in South Africa, which I dearly miss, was a Jaguar XJ 5 litre V8 um, luxury blah 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 and many other words that had uh, it was one of the longest cars in all of human history. And I think driving it here would be a living nightmare. Now, having said that, my wife drove, there's a Bentley, my wife drove a Jeep Grand Cherokee, which is quite a big vehicle, but doesn't have, surprisingly, doesn't have a very long footprint. It's mostly just volume, it goes up, but it's not terribly long. And I've seen a couple of those here, and it works. I think you could quite easily drive something like the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, but I think anything where you get a long car, there are certain corners you're just not going to get around. And I mentioned right at the start of this video, I said people just sort of shuffle on by. What happens when you can't get around a corner, there's one going up to Janvrin School, is people will sort of go halfway around it and stop the traffic, and then they will reverse in traffic, and, uh, and then just make it around the corner instead of a three-point turn. And that's considered fairly normal because of these tight little U-bends and so forth. We didn't encounter one on this drive, but uh, but there are a few on the island. And nobody seems to particularly care about that. It's just you just shuffle on by and everyone politely waits. Once you get your head around that, driving around here is very, very easy.
if for any bizarre reason you are still with me after all of this time, we are now pretty much next to the parking lot at which I started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive about four or five minutes from here to my actual parking spot, the one that we rent. Now we're only going to rent this one for the next couple of weeks until we move into our new apartment, which actually has underground parking. Thank goodness, hallelujah. Um, <laughs> I'll show you how weird my parking spot is. Like, this just blew my mind and you, it takes some adapting to if you are used to simply driving into your home and parking in your driveway or in your garage. Homes in South Africa are fairly big. They're, they're closer to what you might encounter in the United States, like what would be typical in, like, say, a California or a Texas. Large amounts of open space, uh, you know, fairly big driveways, fairly big yards, that sort of thing. So this took a lot of getting used to. I will show it to you. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. No, not you, Bradley. It's you, Nigel. I'll have to edit that out later. Right, so here we are back again at the south, and we are driving toward uh, St. Helia and the CBD and the financial district and all of that sort of thing again. There is a lot more to this island. I've just kind of taken a meander up one side and back down, up the other side and back down. That's essentially what we've done. We haven't really done much in the middle or up the top. And um, the nature of the place actually changes from place to place. So like the top of the island looks nothing like the bottom. And each has its own individual type of beauty. It really is a lovely place to live. Up ahead you see the, uh, the big sort of dome on the hillside. That's Fort Regent. There's a huge kids' play place up there if, you, uh, if you're visiting the island for the first time. Head up to Fort Regent at the top of the hill in St. Helia. Take your kids for a play in the massive jungle gym thing. If they're, say, I don't know, eight or younger, maybe ten or younger, something like that. The Aqua Splash Zone in my gym would be coming up on the right-hand side. In fact, as we... we will duck down and go under a bridge. Basically, as we start heading downward, the gym will be on my right-hand side. And uh, I walk from our apartment to my gym every time I go. I go sort of two days out of three, maybe three days out of four. I love my little gym. Look at the classic car coming the other way. It's another thing they have here. Classic car, museum, parade, uh, parades in the street and so forth. Sometimes you'll just see sort of ten old classic cars going by. Apropos nothing. That's just the most marvellous thing. Their love of history and their sense of sort of historical theatre and drama and display is just second to none. They are so good at it. Let's take a little look out here. You know, that's the castle. And one of the fastest incoming tides in the world. Radisson and so forth. Just put you back up there. You are a little skew. Well, I'm sorry about that. A lot of sports cars on the island, which is entirely pointless. 40 mile an hour speed limit and you're on the fast road right now. This is it. I shall bring my C63 AMG and it shall be pointless. What do you want to do here if you are interested in sort of living here and buying cars and so forth? There's the Cine World and next is the Arcade and TGI Fridays, which is a really, really nice one. Um, and the sort of glass one coming up here is my gym on the right fitness first. Hello, gym! Greetings, many squitty people. What you want to do with regard to cars is you want to get yourself the most luxurious vehicle you can get with the smallest engine possible. So, let's take an example of that one. If you were buying, I don't know, at the level of a C-Class Mercedes, you want to get yourself one that has like the entry level engine because, because there's no point, you can't use it here. But you want to get it with things like the seat warmers and the ambient lighting and the panoramic sunroof and if you can get the drop top version, get one of those. Um, you do need like things like reverse camera and uh, navigation and so forth. If you can get the 360 panoramic views, the sort of the drone view one, 
that would help you a lot with tight spots and parking. Trust me on this one. Oh, trust me on this one. But that's the kind of philosophy for, for buying a car here, is get, yourself, get the most stuff you can get with the smallest possible engine. You don't need an engine. Take one out of a lawnmower, it'll do. Like I say, you do see people driving the big SUVs. I think you give yourself a very hard time parking at stores and going around country lanes and things like that. I mean, especially shopping parking lots. I think parking with a big Range Rover must be uniquely challenging. Maybe go for the smaller one, like the Evoque or the uh, Velar. Pack it with stuff. Don't worry about an engine. So as we come out of this tunnel, which we've done before, uh, you will see the police headquarters up ahead. Gads, it's the fuzz. It's the coppers. I do wish that they would uh, spend a little time outside the nightclub at 2.30 a.m. on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. They do a very good job on the island. We like them. They drive the little BMW i3s, and I think that says something. It's like they've selected that as ideal for this island. Okay, so we are now heading into St. Helia proper, and there's a parking lot off to my right there, so if anyone's sort of doing shopping around here, you go and park your car there for a little while. Um, and this goes into sort of shopping districts and flats and things like that. Which, as you see, I mean, it's totally different to the sort of English countryside we were in a moment prior. <laughs> I'm going to show you my parking spot. This is something else. There's a little gym on my right here called Fit for Life. Seems nice enough. I haven't really uh, been in there or had a look around. Right, ladies and gentlemen, behold the parking spot of obscurity. There are usually about 12 cars around it here. That is the parking spot that costs approximately the same as a home in South Africa. And thank you for taking a drive with me. That's been our first year on the island of Jersey from 2021 to 2022. If you're planning to visit, please leave a comment below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We hope to see you and your tourist spending money someday soon in the Channel Islands and on the beautiful island of Jersey.